Okay, so in the last video, uh, I'll just refresh your memory. Uh, we looked at uh, random variables, and that's a value that cannot be predicted, but is determined by the outcome of an experiment. Um, now, we're really interested in discrete random variables. Um, dice, coins, picking a card, shoe sizes, uh, anything anything that takes a finite number of values, we're talking about discrete random variables. Uh, let's look at this quick example. Um, now, it's not really a question in itself per se, but it's important for us to go through a little bit of this stuff um, because there's going to be something important that you're going to learn by the end of this lesson, hopefully, about discrete probability distributions. We're going to learn a couple of properties, I guess. Uh, now, imagine that you tossed three coins in the air. Um, so you've just taken three coins, put them in your hand, thrown them up into the air. List the, oops, that should say list the sample space. So let's, let's list the sample space. Now, remember, the sample space is a list of everything that can happen. Okay, the easiest way to do that is, um, I guess, with a tree diagram. Uh, the first coin that hits the ground could either be a head or a tail. Now, the second coin that hits the ground could be a head or a tail. And, of course, the third coin that hits the ground could be a head or a tail. Okay, so here we have our tree diagram. Uh, don't worry too much. We're not going to see too much of these tree diagrams, but it is handy to be able to draw them. Um, now, from that tree diagram, we can write up our sample space. One thing that could happen is you could have heads, heads, heads. So the first coin's a head, the second coin's a head, the third coin's a head. The second thing that could happen is the first coin's a head, the second coin's a head, and the third coin is a tail. That's heads, heads, tail. Um, first coin's a head, second coin's a tail, third coin's a head, head, tail, head. And we can continue on just by reading across our tree diagram. Okay, so there's our first uh, little piece here. We've listed the sample space. That's the list of everything that can happen. Uh, if you're not sure of what a sample space is, there you go, list of everything that can happen. Now we want to fill in this table. Now this table has two columns, the number of tails that ha that occurred and the probability that that would happen. So you could have anything from no tails occurring to only one tail occurring to two tails occurring and of course you could get all three tails occurring. So we just need to look at uh, what the probability of each of those things happening now. Now we give, if the number of tails is denoted by this small x, so zero is, is a small x, so, um, sorry, a lowercase x, the probability of it happening is written as p bracket x, so the probability of zero. So the probability of zero tails. The only way that zero tails can happen is if there's three heads. Boom, boom, boom. Now that happened once out of eight possibilities. There were eight possibilities. Heads, heads, heads would only happen once, so the probability of no tails is one in eight. Now, I might jump down to the bottom here and look at the probability of three tails. Now, the probability of th three tails is the same. There's only one way it can happen if all of the coins are tails, so that's going to be one in eight as well. Now, the other two, we need to look at these now. Now, the probability of um, one tail. You can see one tail happens here, it happens here, and it also happens here. So there's three different ways that you can get just one tail if you flip three coins. So the probability of that happening is three and eight. And finally, we have two tails. So two tails, two tails, and two tails. That can happen one, two, or three different ways, so three and eight. 
Okay, all of this has been do and done to do one thing. What we've created by filling out this entire table is draw up something called the probability distribution. Now I might just write it a different way so you can see, um, I guess, a little bit of mathematical notation. Now x is our variable, it could be 0, 1, 2 or 3. Now this notation here is something you need to be aware of. The probability that capital X, now capital X is the variable in question. So the variable in question is number of tails. So the probability that the number of tails is equal to X. You'll see this probability of capital X equals lowercase x a lot. It means the probability that the thing that we're talking about, in this case number of tails, is equal to uh, a given number, 0, or 1, or 2, or 3. Okay, so the probability of this is 1 in 8, 1 tail was 3 in 8, 3 in 8, and 1 in 8. This whole thing here that we've just done, again, it's a probability distribution. Uh, I'll just switch over to a fresh page here so we can, actually I might just get rid of my, um, my thing here. Where's my eraser? Okay, so last thing we really need to talk about is the properties properties of uh, probability distributions. Two important properties that we get of pro of probability distributions. One is that the um, no, I'll write it in mathematical notation, but then we'll talk about it. Zero is less than the probability that the variable is equal to x, which is less than one. All this says is that the probability of something occurring needs to be between 0 and 1. The probability of something happening is between 0 and 1. Now that makes sense. Something can't have a negative probability and something also can't have a probability greater than 1. You can't have a 110% chance of something happening. So there's one property of probability distributions. Uh, the second property of probability distributions, um, the sum of all of the probabilities so the probability, the sum of all of these happening must be equal to 1. Now this little sign here means sum of. The sum of the probability of all of the probabilities is equal to 1. That makes sense as well. Something has to happen. If we add up all of these numbers, 1 eighth plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths plus 1 eighth, we get 1. I'll just write that in words so you can write it out. Sum of all probabilities is equal to 1. Okay, so if these two um, properties aren't met, then you're dealing with something that isn't a uh, probability a probability distribution or a discrete probability distribution. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I've just made up a different kind of a discrete probability distribution, or maybe it is. Um, X can be 5, 7, 8, or 9. Here are the probabilities. So a 5 happening would be 0 0.3, a 7 happening would be 0 0.2, an 8 happening would be 0 0.5, and a 9 happening would be 0 0.1. Now the question is, is this a discrete 
probability distribution. And the way that we can check to see if this is a discrete probability distribution is by going back and looking at our properties. Now, the probability of something happening has to be between 0 and 1. Now, you can see that each of these numbers are between 0 and 1. 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. So the first property, that's fine. All of these numbers, then none of them are negative and none of them are greater than 1. Now, the second property, the sum of all property probabilities must be equal to 1. Now, you can see that if we add these up, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1, if I add all that up, I get an answer of 1.1. That means that it fails my second uh, test of of whether something's a discrete probability distribution. So this, the thing that we're looking at here, is not a discrete probability distribution. Uh, and here's a slightly different question. Um, if this is a discrete probability distribution, find the value of A. So we're already told it fulfills both of our criteria, um, but we have some unknowns. We know that the probability of getting a 10 is 0 0.2. We know that the probability of getting a 13 is 0 0.5, but we don't know the probability of, of getting an 11 or getting a 12. But we do know it's a discrete probability distribution, which means that all of these values, uh, all of those values are going to add up to 1. So if 1 equals 0 0.2 plus a plus 2a plus 0 0.5, that means that 1 equals 0 0.7 plus 3a, which means that this 0 0.7 can come over here. 0 0.3 equals 3a, which means that 0 0.3 divided by 3 equals a, so a equals 0 0.1. Uh, so we can use that property of the probability distribution uh, to find some unknowns inside of a probability distribution as well. Uh, all right, so that's probably enough talking from me. That's the longest video I think I've ever made. Um, let's see how we go with some of these questions.